Time now for News Abuse, where we highlight the most dreadful cases of media misconduct. Joining us now is Fox's own Howie Kurtz, the host of Media Buzz. Howie, it's great to see you. So, the new president said today that the press does not cover terror attacks. Is that true? Well, it's true that t attacks in Europe get less coverage than those on U.S. soil. And it's also true that we move on more quickly now from these attacks mm -hmm. because, tragically, they've become so much more common. But I'm puzzled, frankly, that President Trump would say the dishonest press doesn't want to cover these attacks. This is always huge public interest. Moving on to news abuse, Tucker, you got to... There is on this channel. We certainly covered them, well, and I think we should. Absolutely should. Magazine covers have found a new villain. Let's put a couple of these up. Der Spiegel as President Trump beheading the Statue of Liberty. Lovely. Bloomberg Business Week says, insert hastily drafted, legally dubious, economically destabilizing executive order here. And worse for last, Ireland's Village Magazine, crosshairs on Trump's head with the headline, why not? But thankfully, Tucker, it concludes that it would not be right to assassinate him. Yeah, I don't even know if we're putting it on the screen. Maybe we should need to show it's it. Pretty, it's pretty over the top. So the, the piece in the magazine debates whether or not it's a good idea to It says it's not president. a good idea, but nevertheless, let's sell magazines by putting the crosshairs right But there is a debate. Like, this is just something that people debate. Uh, it's a good idea yes. to murder the president of the United States. Right. Now, the Washington Post over the weekend backed off an article about Steve Bannon supposedly marching himself over to Homeland Security and telling Secretary John Kelly that he couldn't exempt green card holders from the president's travel ban and then being on a 2 a.m. conference call. None of that was true. I talked to White House uh, spokesman Sean Spicer, who told me the following. Um, for a paper that's criticized us about the use of facts, the idea that they didn't follow basic journalist standards and then excuse their pathetic reporting is unbelievable. The problem is the reporter, Josh Rogan, didn't call the White House for comment. Uh, the paper did put out an editor's note, updated the story of Spicer's comments. Spicer still wants an apology. So, I mean, typically, going back 100 years, the protocol was if you're writing about the White House, you call them to see what they think. But it's, if you consider them morally reprehensible, I guess you don't have to, right? Well, especially if you have a story based on unnamed sources in which you're making allegations against top officials and that we're in meetings and phone calls, you know, you would want to have a chance for them to punch back, if only to protect yourself. So right. I don't get, like, not calling for comment. It's, to me, it's journalism 101 now. It was a story that made the rounds. The Fox station in Detroit reported this. It was picked up by BuzzFeed, New York Daily News, kind of around the world. An Iraqi refugee in Michigan uh, claimed that his mother died because of Trump's temporary travel ban uh, when he was trying to bring her from Iraq to the U.S. for medical treatment. She died because of him, this man said. Turns out the same Detroit station later uh, discovered that this was completely and totally untrue. It was a hoax. They talked to his imam who confirmed that the woman had actually passed away at least five days before the president's action. Interesting. What's even more interesting is the assumption that undergirds it, which is the U.S. government has a moral responsibility to let in people. Anyone, you know, there's a lot of sick people around the world. And by the way, I feel sorry for anyone who dies trying to seek medical care. On the other hand, it's the United States' responsibility to admit anyone who wants medical care. I mean, I don't, I don't, what is the assumption here? Well, the assumption would be that she could have come if it wasn't for this arbitrary and heartless um, temporary ban. And, you know, the idea is if you can find emotionally wrenching cases, and there have been some of people stuck at airports and so for forth. Sure. Okay. But, look, we can all fall victim to hoaxes, but what I don't understand is why there's such a rush to put these claims on the air before you can verify them. Take another day or two, check it out. People sometimes lie. They make stuff up. Yeah, they often do. I know sir, there weren't a lot of interviews with people in, say, Wichita saying, you know, I feel safer now. Yeah, that's the part of the stuff that gets <laughs> undercovered. Like, there is another side to this. Some people like that. The executive orders. I didn't see them being interviewed. You know, there ever. were stories in the New York Times and Washington Post where they went out and talked to Trump voters, and they liked what he was doing generally. It wasn't right. on this. I think that shows what they didn't do in the campaign, doing a little bit more of now, at least showing that there is another side when it comes to this there president. There is. There always is. Howie Kurtz, thanks a lot for that. Good to see you, Tucker.